Our title today is Calorimetry. And so calorimetry is going to be the last way that we're going to talk about in this chapter um, to determine the heat of reaction. The first two ways we've done it, you guys, are using standardized heats of formation to find change in enthalpy for a reaction and using Hess's law. Now, this third way actually makes the most sense. It's the most concrete. And um, it is the way that we will do it actually in lab. And that is you measure. You just measure the heat that is associated with a chemical reaction. So calorimetry is a laboratory science. Okay? So calorimetry is the science. is the science of measuring the heat associated with a chemical reaction. Okay, so how much heat is flowing in, how much heat is flowing out, what is the energy associated with the reaction? Well, we can do that by directly measuring it using this method called calorimetry. So the other two methods to find delta H were theoretical. This one is concrete. Okay, so calorimetry is based on changes in temperature. Calorimetry Calorimetry is based on changes in temperature associated with the reaction. We just measure it, right? We just measure it with a thermometer. Now, we can't just do that, um, unfortunately, because temperature is uh, average kinetic energy. So there is going to be something um, we have to be able to relate that to joules as well. So um, there's two things that we need to know in order to solve problems or do laboratory experiments based on calorimetry. And uh, one of them is this, something called the specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity, specific heat capacity. Is the energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Is 
going to be joules per gram degrees Celsius. So, how much energy it takes in joules to raise one, the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Now, all substances have different heat capacities. Um, so, heat capacity is specific to a particular substance. Water has a very high heat capacity, meaning that it takes a lot of energy, many joules, to change the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. On the other hand, something like mercury has a very low heat capacity, meaning that it does not take a lot of energy to change one gram of mercury, the temperature of one gram of mercury by one degree Celsius. So things have different, different heat capacities depending on what the material is. Okay, so every material has its own unique specific heat capacity. How much, how many joules it takes, how much energy it takes to change the temperature of one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius. Now, we also have something called the molar heat capacity. And that is, okay, so this is the specific. Sp specific. Specific heat capacity. Okay, we also have the molar. And how do you think that unit is different? Any ideas? That's going to be joules per mole degrees Celsius. So how much energy does it take to change the temperature of one mole of a material by one degree Celsius? Okay. All right, to go from specific heat capacity to molar heat capacity, you're just going to multiply it by the molar mass, right? Changing grams. Okay. Now, um, we have a formula that we use in calorimetry to calculate delta H that's associated with a particular chemical reaction. So, you can see it written in a couple of ways, which shouldn't surprise you at this point. Um, you can either see it as Q equals MC delta T, or you can see it written as Q equals MS delta T. C is equal to S is equal to specific heat capacity. Okay. What do you think M is? of the substance of which we're talking about the heat capacity of. And what we're going to see in calorimetry, you guys, is that generally that's water. Okay, uh, delta T is change in temp. And last but not least, what is Q? Well, Q is equal to the absolute value of delta H. Okay, so Q is equal to the absolute value of delta H. So we 
use this equation to find delta H. Now, we cannot calculate, get an answer for Q, and say that's delta H because it's the absolute value of it. So in, in, in order to actually find our delta H, we have to look at our change in temperature. Meaning that if the temperature change, if the temperature goes up, that means that the reaction was exothermic. And that means that delta H is going to have a negative sign. If the temperature of the reaction uh, or the temperature that we're measuring from the reaction goes down, that means that the reaction is endothermic, and that means then that the value of delta H is going to be positive. So whatever your numerical value is here, you guys, that's the absolute value of delta H. And then we have to evaluate the change in temperature to figure out um, what kind of sign delta H is going to have, whether it's going to be exothermic or endothermic. Okay, so Q will tell us eventually the heat associated with reaction change in H to eighth H. Okay, we've got a long problem here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put it on the board. You guys pause. One molar barium nitrate is mixed with one liter of sodium sulfate. In a calorimeter, the white solid barium sulfate forms and the temperature of the mixture increases to 28.1 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity of the solution is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the density of the final solution is 1 gram per mil. Calculate the enthalpy change per mole of barium sulfate formed. To solve this problem, we are going to use Q equals MS delta T. Q equals M. You know what? I'm going to use it the way they have it on the AP equation sheet. Um, they write it as Q equals MC delta T. Q equals MC delta T is the way you'll see it on the AP Chem equation sheet. All right. Um, so we're looking for Q because that's going to give us the absolute value of delta H. Um, and that's what we're looking for here in this problem, the enthalpy change per mole bearing solar So the first thing we need to do, you guys, is we need to find the mass of the entire solution. Okay, so the mass of the solution. We've got one liter of barium nitrate added to one liter of sodium sulfate. So our total volume is 2.0 liters of solution and um, we've got a thousand mils per liter and how are we going to get to grams here? Why did I convert this to milliliters? Because we have a density of this thing being 1.0 grams per mil. So that is the reason why I converted uh, liters to milliliters, because my density conversion was grams per mil. So that tells us then that we have 2.00 times 10 to the third grams, or 2,000, right? 2,000 grams of substance, in this case in the liquid. All right, so there's our mass. We need to um, also have C, and they tell us, so this is going to be um, they tell us that the specific heat capacity of the solution is 4.18. Four point one eight joules per gram degrees 
Celsius, which is actually a specific heat capacity of water. The majority of the solution we're looking at, you guys, um, is water. And so, hence, heat capacity of the solution really is the heat capacity of water in this case. Okay, so for water, it takes 4.18 joules to change the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And the last thing we need you guys is delta T, right? So we've got the mass, we've got um, the heat capacity, we need the change in temperature. So delta T is equal to um, our temperature, the difference, the change in our temperature is going to be, it starts at 25 and it goes up to 28.1. So 28.1 minus 25, right? All I'm trying to do is find the difference, you guys, the difference in the temperature right now. Okay, and so that is going to be 1, 3. Okay, so our delta T is 3.1 degrees Celsius. Notice, I haven't assigned a negative, a positive, nothing like that, you guys. It's delta T, change in temperature. And, you know, now do I have everything I need to calculate Q? I do believe that. Yes, I do. So, I'm just going to plug it into the equation, and then we're going to make some going to make some judgments here. All right, so Q is equal to, my mass was 2.0 times 10 to the third grams. And my temperature, I mean my Capacity, heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my delta T was um, 3.1. Put it over 1. Just so I'm only doing it this time, you guys, so you can see how the units cancel, right? So my degrees Celsius, my grams, and what does that leave me? That leaves me with joules. So 2.0 times 2 to the third times 4.18 times 3.1 degrees Celsius, and that's going to give me Q. So my value of Q in this case is going to be 2.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. Okay, now, what did I do? We've got 2,000 grams of solution that this is occurring in. I'm right? pouring together these two, these two um, substances. Okay, they're molar solutions. We've got one molar barium nitrate, one molar sodium sulfate. And so, let's just write it. What do I have here? I've got barium nitrate. BANO3 plus Na2SO4, and that is going to give me barium sulfate and sodium nitrate. Okay, and that's going to be a 2, this is going to be aqueous, and this is going to be a solid aqueous. Okay, and so what we're looking at here, you guys, is there is heat associated with adding these two things together and forming this precipitate. Okay, so if I take one molar and one molar and pour them together, I am going to measure a temperature change, meaning that heat was... Um, heat was exchanged with the environment. Now remember we did the same thing with baking soda and vinegar, right? And it was endothermic, 
Okay, so this is exactly the same thing here where we're forming barium sulfate. And so we've got 2,000 grams of overall solution. To change the temperature, it takes 4.18 joules for every gram of it. And you've got 2,000 grams of it. And this is how much the temperature changed, 3.1 degrees Celsius. So that tells us the number of joules associated with forming this barium sulfate that is for this reaction right here. That is what we're looking for, you guys, the delta H for this reaction. Okay, um, now, this is Q, which is the absolute value of delta H. And so now what we need to do, you guys, in order to find the delta H, we need to look at the temperature change. Okay, so the temperature started at 25 degrees Celsius and it ended at 28.1. So if we measure the temperatures of these things to start with, they're both at 25 degrees Celsius. When we pour them together, the temperature goes up to 28.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there's 3.1 degrees difference Temperature go up, temperature went down, the temperature went up. So that means that heat was released into the surroundings. So that means that the reaction was exothermic. And that means that the sign for delta H is negative. So it's going to be negative 2.6 times 10 to the fourth joules. It's asking us for what? Joules per what? Mole of barium sulfate formed. Okay, but <laughs> we made it really easy in the problem. We used one liter of one molar. One liter of one molar. Okay, so everything, yeah, these are in a one to one to one. So that means essentially, you guys, we made one mole of barium sulfate. All right, so there it is. Negative 2.6 times 10 to the 4 joules for every mole of barium sulfate.